Logic Pro for iPad just got a massive new update that not only fixes dozens of issues and adds loads of new features, it also answers the question of how Apple plans to approach updates to the app in future. This really is quite the update. You can find the full release notes for Logic Pro for iPad version 1.1 on Apple's website. I'll link to them down in the description as well, but please note you do need to be running iPad OS version 17 or newer in order to grab this update. I won't go through each and every note in this video as I don't want to bore you to tears, but here are what I think are the standout fixes, features and new additions. One of the standout new features in this update is the Mastering Assistant. When active, the Mastering Assistant analyzes your project and based on the analysis, may apply corrective EQ, adjust the loudness, or adjust the overall stereo spread of your project. If you're familiar with other AI mastering services like Lander Mastering, DistroKids Mixia, or BandLab's free online mastering, then you'll know the score here. I will create a more in-depth video on how the Mastering Assistant works in future, but for now, here's a quick rundown of how it works. To access the Mastering Assistant, you can either access it from the plugins area by tapping on the plugins button in the middle of the view control bar to open the plugins area. Then tap the output button to view the stereo output channel strip, and then tap the magic wand to add the Mastering Assistant. Or to add the Mastering Assistant from the mixer, tap the mixer button on the left side of the view control bar to view the mixer channel strips. Then tap the magic wand on the stereo output channel strip to add the Mastering Assistant. When you first apply the Mastering Assistant, it will apply the transparent mastering preset by default. You can change this by tapping on the character section in the top left of the plugin and selecting another preset. There are dynamic EQ and stereo spread controls that you can fiddle with here as well, or you can have the assistant reanalyze your project here. You can also bypass the plugin or activate loudness compensation. I haven't tested the mastering assistant extensively yet, but one thing that jumps out at me straight away is how subtle it is. Some of the other AI slash online mastering services really over egg the pudding in a bid to make it look like they are doing something amazing to your project. This doesn't, and I quite like that. As I said, I'll be diving into the Mastering Assistant in greater detail in a future video, but this seems like a really great addition to the app. With this new update comes a brand new sound pack, Hybrid Textures. This pack includes a variety of patches and loops, all of which use Sample Alchemy's transformative resynthesis modes to turn interesting sounds into extraordinary instruments. It comes with 81 Apple loops and 70 Sample Alchemy patches. If you've maybe overlooked Sample Alchemy up till now, or have kind of struggled to get the most from it, it's time to revisit it, as the patches here are phenomenal. Trippy Ethereal Soundscapes is the name of the game here, and I'd highly recommend at least diving into the instrument patches and having a wee fiddle. Brilliantly bizarre stuff.
Apple made a few puzzling decisions when porting across some of Logic Pro's features to iPad, not least of which was the quick sampler's inability to, well, sample anything. You could import files and samples into Quick Sampler, but you couldn't actually record into it. Well, that's been amended in this latest update. Simply open Quick Sampler, tap on Recorder in the top left of the plugin, hit Record and record your sample. You can then chop up, edit and play it as you would any other imported sample and record your sample and record your sample and record your sample and record say what you want about apple but their commitment to making their in-house apps as accessible as possible for those with disabilities is amazing. There are 69 nice voiceover improvements in this update that allow those using it to do things like add notes in the piano roll, navigate menus, and even track downloads. I remember how much of a revelation voiceover features like these were for those with sight issues when Apple added them to GarageBand a few years back. And it's great to see them continue to focus on accessibility in Logic Pro for iPad 2. I know, I know, bug fixes aren't the most glamorous or exciting things in the world, but there were some really stupid issues present in Logic Pro for iPad that have now seemingly been fixed. Things like the Apple Pencil actually being reliably usable now, instead of it working for some things and just not for other things. Things like the time signature track actually updating now when you bring in a MIDI file with a different time signature. Things like MIDI keyboards and controllers now being detected and usable when attached, instead of the disconnect reconnect kerfuffle we had to do previously until Logic decided to miraculously let you use it in the app. This bug fix list is extensive to say the least, and while it's great to see all of this stuff be addressed, I maybe would have liked to have seen some of the more egregious issues fixed via smaller, more frequent updates, honestly. As I said, I've linked the full version 1.1 release notes down in the description, so stick the kettle on, put your feet up, and have a gander yourself at what's new. If there is a specific new feature you'd like to see a video on, please leave a comment below and let me know, and hit that like button on the way past, as it helps more people see this video. Right, see you next time.